Hello and welcome back to the Face It Stage 1 London LAN Finals. We've had a great weekend of Counter-Strike so far, but we're here to find out who's going to make it as the final team into the semi-finals that take place tomorrow. We've already got three teams there. Yeah, yeah. King Thorin is with me. Lord Thorin. Lord Thorin you yeah. prefer, you prefer Lord, oh, Lord sorry, Thorin. Sorry, I was just, uh, just wiping a young Danish man's blood off my uh, scepter of analytical power. <laughs> That's the only given by myself. That's the only reason I'm yeah. back, because Cadian's dead sorry, now. Yeah. Poor Cadian. can put away the... Enough with the uh, pomp and... You know. <laughs> Welcome back, teams. everyone. I've had massive FOMO today. Massive what? Bono? FOMO. Hey. FOMO. Okay. FOMO. Do you I'll know what, what that I'm stands in. for? It means fear of missing out. I've missed you all. Okay. I've missed you all a lot, standing over there doing, doing interviews. Okay. You have been missing out, I think. I know, I have, I have. <laughs> welcome back to the, uh, the desk. Guys, I say I'm, wel I'm saying welcome back. I should be, you should be the one welcoming me, me back. But... We are here to see who's going to go. <laughs> no, no one does. <laughs> yeah, no, no. it's fine. Right. Yeah, it's probably fine. Should, Welcome yeah. back, James. Yeah. I'll, I'll Welcome back to my desk. So, yeah. Thanks. Cheers. We're going to see Na'Vi play TSM again. Yeah. A rematch from uh, yesterday's match. Are you looking forward to this, Thorin? Should be a should be a great Especially match. Especially right? because of the way the game yesterday went. It was a really great game, and you couldn't tell which maps they were going to get the wins on. As a result, I think a lot of that's going to play into what's going to happen now because there's going to be the mind games of what happened on this map before, what pick should we do here, and so... And you have to add in, just like when Nip had to play today against... Admittedly, they had to play against the Immunity. It's not the same caliber as Na'Vi. But coming into that match, you could have wondered, like, right, well, will Immunity have, like, the edge? Will they actually get the upset because Nip's coming in on tilt because they've just lost? So now TSM, they probably feel like we should already be in the semi-finals. Now they have to play a dangerous opponent that they could have avoided, so... I feel like that plays a bit to Na'Vi's favor here because they've just been sat back probably watching TSM, waiting, and so now they've got a little bit of an edge on them, I think. Do, do either of you guys feel that maybe the fact that Na'Vi have been relaxed, as Thorin said, do you think they're going in cold? Do you think that TSM, this has like been a massive warm-up, or do you, think, do you think it will be a disadvantage for TSM? Uh, it's really hard to tell. I mean, TSM did choke those last few rounds, and it really w went kind of hard on them. Yeah. At the same time, they did have, as Thorin said, like a warm-up game before this, so it's really hard to predict. When I was talking with them out here uh, in that event, they actually looked kind of relaxed, or TSM that is, and they were kind of like laughing off, it, like openly joking about the choking, so they might actually be able to like come back from that. Uh, it's a very good approach, I think. That's kind of how they approached it, I believe, Dan, isn't it? How they approached the, the chokes in the, in the previous events when they were when they were only getting to semi-finals. They, they were joking about it. I know uh, at Starladder, they, we were talking to them about getting to a final. They said, what, we can, we can win something? Is there a, there's a final? So they, they do like to make light of the situation. Do you feel like that's going gonna, gonna to benefit them? Well, I was walking to the catering area earlier. I saw Carrigan. He looked at me. I looked at him, and he was like... <laughs> like you know, just, just, he was just, he just... I mean, these guys just completely own the fact that this is, this is the thing. Like they just, and that's, of course, the best way to go with something like this. Because uh, generally speaking, if I mean they've already had a good result. Okay. What, what, what's what's I going I on there? I don't buy this whole thing. That it's the best way to go with it. It's one way to go. There, it's okay? Yeah, of course. Depending on the personnel you have, maybe that's the one you choose. I can't, personally, I like the like, VP approach or the Navi approach. If you lose, you get a bit mad and you're like, oh, you're annoyed. You maybe complain at the guy who made the key mistake. I actually don't listen. It's one thing if you can just like shake it off a bit, like oh yeah, we you know we choked a bit. But they almost go too far. They're like, ha, we uh, we choked again, didn't we? Oh, <laughs> and he's like, this guy always. Losing in the key moment. Ah, oh, I tell you what, I, I, I don't mind me. It's fine. My whole life's pretty much a joke at this point in time. Like, it's, it's always about to happen, and then it doesn't. Why does God hate me? Oh, I don't know. I'm just. Uh, oh yeah, I can't wait to play the next game. Yeah. So do you think it's all forced? This kind of this positivity. Uh, do you feel like it's really forced? Here's the, here's the sad thing. When I was saying before the break, like actually that when you look at when they are choking, they never really seem to get mad. But they, it's not. There's no emotion actually. They just seem to sort of all like freeze a little bit and just mm. be kind of like the lack of emotion they're just like oh like worried and like they're hoping this guy's gonna do something or someone's gonna give like the speech like oh come on guys we can do this but no one does so i actually kind of worry that it's that just the, the personalities they have in the team they just don't have that like strong figure in that sense because when you look at teams like Virtus pro or i'm trying to think of another good team probably nip in the past they have certain person personalities like good ones like freiburg for example i remember when freiburg lost that dreamhack winter final to um ldlc and he lost in really narrow fashion and his team shouldn't even have been in the final they shouldn't even have had a chance to beat ldlc one of the best teams in the world and right afterwards instead of going like oh you know like we gave it a bay a bit and it was a good final and good second place his first tweet was it just said you don't win a silver you lose a gold 
I've never got that feeling about the TSM guys. I felt it's more like they're always like, oh, but we did give it a good try, didn't we? And like, I hope next time it goes different. But that's the thing. It's not a one-off thing. It's happening again. In fact, it's only not happened once, basically, ever. So I kind of feel like almost worried that they're habituated to it, that they don't mind it as much. I'd almost rather one of them was like, I mean, I've heard all these rumors, okay, that Cajun B is a big rager, but he seems just like the rest of them to just accept it. You know, I'd almost like it if he was like, oh, this is bullshit. I'm not going to play under these conditions. See, Cadian's done it to me now. No, I'm um, dropping. I was, I was, I'm you dropping you surprised yeah. me, Thor. Whatever. <laughs> I, well, it's technically a quote. I didn't actually say that. That's what he hypothetically would have said. I was just quoting verbatim because okay. you know, it'd be rude to change what he would say. You say, about, you say about this having this, this one big voice in the team. Yeah. Should we not expect Carrigan to be, to You'd be hope that so, one? wouldn't you? The problem, here's, the, here's what's weird. I think part of his problem is he's the new man. And I think when you're the new man into a team, even if things go really well, there's still that adjustment period where, first of all, if the other four have been there for a while, they can cut you at any time if they don't like what you're saying. And then secondly, because you're new into the team yourself, you're, you usually focus on your own game. Like, oh, I've got to get my stuff up to standard. Like, I can't just start telling other people what to do. Like, the difference is, okay, in Titan, existence can be the worst player in the whole team. He could have, like, 0 to 15, but he has the authority, and he knows, like, right, well, the only point of me being in this team is I've got to be the voice that, like, tells people what to do and get this guy back on track. So I would hope Carrigan, maybe, maybe that's the thing. Maybe he can develop into that player. Maybe he can learn kind of his personnel. Like, oh, this guy, like, maybe, okay, maybe someone like Cajun B's a fiery guy. So maybe that guy, you challenge him, like, yeah, hey, I need you on this map. Maybe device is like more of a shy guy and you need to be like, listen, don't worry about that. Like, you'll get it together. Like, it's, it's kind of like knowing your personnel. That's what like managers have to do in football. You know, there's a difference between tactical manager and the, the man manager, I think. Do you feel like they might need a bit more time then? Carrigan might need a bit more time to, to become that leader that they need at this time? Yeah, I actually think so. I mean, he's been in the team for about maybe six months now or something. I mean, that's quite a long time, but... Uh, <coughs> maybe six months more and another thing I felt like um, they should have done in that game particularly is like they should use the timeout earlier mm. and like use the entire time because it felt like they took a timeout and then Kerrigan just said we're gonna do this and then they just un unpaused immediately just have a break they can just like say nothing because I don't know it just helps to like get the pressure off you I'm scared that they brought that photo up again the what production team because Last time I saw this, it went all went haywire. Okay. But you're staying quiet so far, so that's yeah, good. Well, that's that's good. good. Okay, let's let's talk about Navi then, because yeah. we spoke about this a lot yesterday. But obviously, we'll have new viewers now as well. Key players for for Navi, the ones we keep mentioning are Guardian and Flamey. Yeah. Right. What well, you guys keep mentioning them? I, I actually think here's the thing. I'll come clean here. Oh. I actually think Flamey's a bit overhyped. I think really? he's the player where. He's not like a consistent, like you always know what you're going to get from him. He'll have the occasional map where he goes crazy, but he has some maps where his impact's just okay. I actually think, to me, the second best player in Na'Vi, I think is Edward. Yeah, I agree I with that. I think Edward's just crazy, especially because Edward has this like... Okay, here's a, here's a concept that I took from the N NBA. The, it's called an irrational confidence player. And it's the player where he's not the best player on your team, but he thinks he is. And so if you put him in the game, you purposely put him in the game when you need like a quick run of points because he's so crazy. He'll be like, I'm taking every shot myself. Even though he's not the best player, normally he's supposed to pass to the best player. He'll be like, I'm taking this shot and then this one. And so that kind of guy is like a really good like spark plug type guy. And it means that even when you're facing odds where, well, rationally, he should be like, oh, this opponent's better than me. He's like, no, no, I'm the best still. So he'll, he'll, he'll be able to sort of barrel through that. And so in a weird way, those kind of guys are good for you. I think Edward's like that. If you ever see the way Edward plays, I mean... Not to go Cadian, but he's like a no Fs given guy. Like, do you ever remember <laughs> when they played this game at Star Series, where on the deciding map, on the on the 30th round of the game to get to overtime, he was faced in a 1v1, right? And he comes up behind the guy he has to kill to win the 1v1 and go to overtime. And he could just zoom in with the AWP and kill the guy. And he was like, yeah, just do a no-scope instead. And no-scopes aren't even accurate. So yeah. let's go. He just bangs off a no-scope like, that. what do I care? I'm a baller. And it missed. And he lost the whole game for his team and everyone. And he just looked like... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Next time, I love that. I like, I like the fact that there's a guy out there like it's that. So, so it it means that he's not the best player because sometimes that irrational comes that style will get you killed and it'll lose games. But also, that's like a guy with no fear. He's not going to choke. He's just going to go for it. And when he's on his game, he's really good. So I think if him and if him and Guardian both go well, that's Navi at their best for me. Yeah, Dan, Dan you were in agreement about Edward. Were yeah, you? I mean, especially the last few months, he's he's really coming into form. But the thing is, as well with the flamey. Uh, argument is that it's Flamey's supposed to be getting frags. I mean, he's kind of it takes a bit of a lurker role for his team. So if he's not getting the frags, then he's not really doing what he's supposed to be doing on the team. So it's it's one of those situations where it's just a little bit 
Um, it's, it's the obvious choice, basically. And of course, you know, Flamie going into the lineup is, is, is that's what they needed, and it's allowed them to have better results. So the focus, of course, does lie on yeah. upon him. And even, for example, uh, uh, Zeus lately has been playing way better on like certain maps. For example, every dust two I've seen recently, apart from one at this tournament from Navi, Zeus has actually been top fragging for them. So the entire level has been lifted for Navi. They seem to be progressively getting better now that they found uh, new roles with Flamey uh, in for Starx and just fitting that lurker role. Ed was playing better. Guardian has less pressure on on his shoulders as well. As a unit, Navi is just better right now, and they well, have the more strength. I mean, to the their thing bow. is, Zeus obviously has those big hands, you know, for controlling <laughs> things, holding the horses back, as it were, you know, reining things in, working <laughs> things, cranking out rounds when needs be, you know. <laughs> just just well, oh, oh, that was just a subliminal. <laughs> yeah, just get the message across. Yeah. James, you knew that was going to happen. No, yeah, I knew he was just Milk, stalling. Milk, yeah. He was just Milk keeping it all studs on his team for all his, all the work. You've just been going through these in overnight. That's what you were doing last night uh, in your hotel room, wasn't I wonder it? If, uh, I wonder if you, Zeus is a brony. He might be. He is now, in my mind. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. In your mind, you have fantasies about Zeus being a brony in your mind. All the time. Even before like yesterday's conversation. He's a guy with big hands. What can I tell you? <laughs> and a big heart as well. Let's not forget yeah. that guy. Lovely guy. Yeah. Lovely guy. Let's go See through. The I rescued that there. Let's yeah. go through the yeah. vetoes um, for this match. Navi dropped Nuke, and then TSM dropped Cobble. Uh, yeah. Surprising or expected? expected? Navi one's obvious. Drop Nuke. They don't play it. The TSM ones like they don't play Cobble either. But it's not, it's not like Navi are famous for playing Cobble. So I feel like almost if you really wanted to gamble, you could leave that up there, thinking that maybe Navi will ban it later, or you don't have to ban it first anyway. That's that's the only reason it's weird there. But TSM's not famous for Cobble, so it's fine, I guess. Yeah. And and that Nav is actually practicing Cobble a lot lately, yeah. so okay. that might be one of the reasons. But the thing is, they're okay, practicing it because it's actually been a weakness of theirs. So it's kind of like they've left it in there because they can kind of get away with still having it in the pool and risking it. But I, that's actually a good choice, I think, for, from TSM, to be okay. honest. Because got, actually, got, that's a map that Guardian often doesn't have a big impact for them lately. And that's obviously kind of a big deal. And he's and it's a big op map as well. So I think that's a smart smart pick. His was beautiful, though. The, the first pick for Navi. So Navi... The first pick, the first map that we're going to be going to very soon is Overpass. Yeah, yeah. Well, Navi's literally just like, listen, they've got bad memories on that. It's like, I want to put them back in Vietnam, back in the jungle. And they're yeah. like, Charlie's everywhere. What's going on here? And they're just like, they're just getting all these flashbacks and like, welcome back. Welcome back, Cajun B. Welcome back, Carrigan. You know, welcome to hell. War is hell. So I'm liking this. It's kind of yeah. a ballsy pick there. Because so before, this would always have gone like third map. Like, it'd be available, but it's going to go third map. Or maybe, if you leave it then, maybe if TSM's scared, they even ban it, you know. So by picking it now, you kind of immediately put a TSM who's just come out of that game right back onto it again. So I like that move. Do you think that's going to work? Do you think they're going to get into their heads? Hey, I mean, to be honest, I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's, that's basically TSM's downfall. Everyone knows TSM have loads of skilled players. It's the psychology that really gets to them. So why not? I mean, Navi are a great, great at overpass. It's not like they're, they're not familiar with actually playing them there. And honestly, um, at Star Series as well, that was actually another massive choke game from TSM against Navi. So it honestly makes a lot of sense. Okay, last match of the day. Knife round is coming up very soon, if not live right now. Let's find out who's going to be our fourth semi-finalist. Take it away, guys. All right, thank you very much. So. Again, I was mentioning before, uh, Bjorn, about like how Navi have been struggling a little bit on Cobble. So you're saying they're practicing a lot at the moment. Um, have you actually played against them on uh, Cobble? Yeah, I actually think we've played a practice game against them. And they, they crushed us pretty badly. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're actually probably the strongest uh, uh, Cobble team I've played, I would say. So you haven't played many Cobble teams then? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, um, it looks like uh, Navi won the knife round, and of course they're going to start a CT here on overpass. Yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this actually plays out. Um, as Navi again getting that getting that good start, getting the money going is going to be super important on the CT side. And uh, well, can they put TSM in the same kind of position as they were in before? Well, hopefully for their sake, they just they don't get to that situation where they can just win for their sake. But yeah, they shouldn't think about that game too much because they can get in like can't get in their head and uh, of course Navi is going to play in like a completely different way as well. Okay, so we're going to have, uh, it looks like they're setting up for a bit of a split onto B. They've got three members towards Suez here, well, well, one going back towards Monster Tunnel as they make their way in. They're going to spot one player there in the distance, Flamey. He's going to spot the majority of the players and the bombs so they know what's going on. The rotation it is going to start happening, but they can't get the bomb planted straight away. They've got to get these kills and make sure that it's going to be safe. Oh, it's just, uh, Peeking over the top there, and getting some good frags, but Dupree will hold down to the sewers area. So no sneaky Navi players from Connector to hat pack them just yet. But it's all going to be down to Dupree now. Left on short area. 
Guardians, he's very low. Just need that one headshot. What a double peek there from Na'Vi. They're going to pull it off, and they're going to pick up that ever-important pistol round to secure a nice CT economy. And that's like well, probably the most common pistol round you do ST on this map. Is you smoke off um, towards Graffiti on B, and you just get to bomb down, and you usually get like one or two entry frags. We saw them actually being in a 4v2 there, but it's actually really hard to hold on to that bomb site. So. Uh, yeah, so now we're taking that 2v4 on the <coughs> that B site, and you can think, okay, they shouldn't t be able to take a 2v4 after plant, but it's extremely hard to hold that site, actually, because the CTs can then ju jump down here, where we see Flamey jumping down, it's really hard to stop. Okay, this, he's going to get close to the smoke, actually, towards party. And he's going to hear a lot of stepping, so they're going to know that there's lots of TSM players lurking around. And this is quite forward positionally from the SMGs, which could work out quite well. Bungie's going to tap them down towards A long, and they're going to gain some ground towards the toilets, but not before they get stopped by C. So, seized, he just made $1,800 there. That weapon not, just paid not, itself back. Not bad. Not bad mm, for, yeah. a, for a day at the birthday party. So, 2-0 to zero is the score now. Na'Vi, smooth sailing so far, but it's just two rounds in, and TSM getting the uh, bomb planted are going to be able to get the AK buy-in. Let's see if TSM go for their A standard or a straight up B execution. And four guys going towards B, it looks like they're going to be their B execution. Alright, so Carrigan can cause some issues towards Connector. Try to cut off rotating players. Three is going to get spotted actually, not just him, his teammates as well. Bomb is going to be funneling up towards the B bomb side as well through Monster Tunnel. TSM moving forward, it's very fast. Not many grenades to actually aid the push, but they're in on top of the bomb site. They're getting the entries they need. And can they actually get this bomb planted now? It's always a bit of a battle before you can ever get the bomb planted. You want to make sure the CTs are removed from the bomb site uh, correctly. And TSM, I managed to do that. It's just CZ who's left over. He's going to go down. That's a really clean round there from TSM. Four guys surviving, and Na'Vi going to be uh, having to use all their cash here potentially. But there's a couple players with very low money. And I really like the strategy from TSM. Just walking up short there from uh, uh, sewers. It's actually really strong because Navi didn't hear them going there and like if you're up short there towards the B site you can actually go for the plant. Or, like you're on the site after like two seconds. So it's really really hard for Navi to stop. Ooh, interesting smoke here from Zipnix towards the, uh, the end of the toilets area. Guardian with a nice shot, able to find device. Now, can Navi keep hold of these bomb sites? It's gonna be a very crucial round for them. They need to get that economic control back. They need to spend lots of money, but oh no, Dupree gonna find a great shot from the boost there onto Guardian, and he is gonna even things straight back up again. So TSM with control over connector at the moment. But we do have a man pushing, I think it's Edward, all the way around, as you can see right there, like through towards T-spawn uh, T, uh, T and also the back of connect the connector area, the big long area in the middle. Yeah, this should have been an easy round for Nava right now. They Edward flanking, Nava have all the information they need, they know they're going to go towards B, even leaving one guy left in, in the, the toilets just to be safe. And the Execute is going to come in slowly but surely, but Edward's already there in position. He got flashed! Oh my goodness, that barely saved Edward. Uh, is it mixed there, but how long can he survive? He's going to be up against Seize. Great uh, hold there by Na'Vi, despite losing a uh, Guardian from that boost. And generally speaking, look pretty tidy to be honest. TSM looks a little bit lost after they lost their first uh, player or two, so... Yeah, I would like them to see... If you want to go for a slow standard type of play on overpass, I always want them to go for like... more towards party, more towards long, because running out towards um, sewers, you just... <laughs> It's so easy to die from them spamming through that like uh, tree thing there. All right, well it's it looking it's looking pretty standard here from uh, Navi at the start of the round. They got a bit of an aggression uh, into the connector area, but they are going to get removed, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on Guardian. He's actually down to 34 health. He's alone against the entire lineup. His teammates are very far away. Guardian's going to have to connect some shots here if he wants to make this doable. There's number one. Carrigan goes down. Guardian. Missing the second one, doesn't get a chance for another. Device is going to take the site with his team. TSM though, they have to contest with Zeus. He barely made it onto the site in time by Optimus. Flamey coming in from bank. Now they've set up a good defense here. Flamey trying to shoot down Zeus, down to 7 HP now, but they've actually held the A bomb site. This is going to cause TSM to go for that rotate towards B. And uh, Na'Vi, they've got a bit of a faster rotate, but the positions are going to be uh, the, the important factor here. Zeus has picked up an AWP with such low health, that's quite a smart choice from the man. 
As the bomb gets, is going to get planted, Flame, you're going to find Cajun B. Spray coming in, but it's not enough to take down Cajun B. They're so low at the moment, and Zeus is wielding an AWP. Both of them playing for that trade situation where they can easily uh, double peek as well. So Dupree and Cajun B playing it by the book. Zeus is going to realize and back away. Yeah, a smart decision here from Zeus. They really want that offer that next round for Guardian. <coughs> really back and forth at the moment between Na'Vi and TSM. In the early stages, you th you, are you, are you, uh, I mean, Na'Vi are in a spot where their money is going to start to be really, really shaky, and uh, can you imagine they're going to want to run, have orbs constantly on Guardian at the very least? Some, uh, you know, some teams find great effect from double orbs as well, and all the aggression, all the nades that you need are CTs. Again, always big, uh, big cost for the CTs, way more than the T's. So, do you think this is going to be a good moment now for um, Na'Vi to take? Uh, Sorry, for uh, TSM to take economic control? Yeah, especially if they win this round. Let's uh, see if they go for the same push towards uh, party. And uh, I asked them to do that the last round, and they, d <laughs> they delivered, pushing up from the door towards the party area, towards the toilet. And uh, yeah, they're doing the same thing. It's just so easy to gain ground here. So first fight here, altercation between Dupree and Edward. TSM going to gain more ground with that frag. And that might force Na'Vi back a little bit more as well. They've got... Guardian towards the A-Long area, and also, I believe it sees a little bit closer, yep, and uh, Zeus is over towards the B-Bomb site initially, but he's going to rotate back, as they're not 100% sure exactly where TSM are going at the moment, but they have occupied sewers, they're going to be trying to split onto the B-Bomb site, they do get the entry onto Flamey Dupree, able to do that, Zeus spraying through the smoke, but he gets absolutely nothing, TSM cleaning house, with Na'Vi, it's just Guardian who's left over and he's going to have to save that AWP uh, all over again. And uh, he's going to have to be also against... He's going to be the hunted right now. They're all going to be going for him. Yeah, I'm <coughs> TSM winning that round in a really decisive manner. I'm kind of surprised that the guy, I don't know who it was from Na'Vi, but the guy standing inside of the bathrooms uh, over the stairs there uh, took that position. You can see his body there. Um, like, where was he supposed to go? Like, you have no escape route. You always want to take peaks, like, go aggressive A, but you always want to be able to fall back, because if you go down there, you lose all information, the terrorists gain, gain all the ground, and just TSM can just toy with them after that. And uh, Guardian will survive. He was glass cannon mode with, AA with the AWP. Device on screen there. Now, TSM, they they bring themselves back into this, into this one. It's uh, looking like they're about to get some good momentum going. I mean, they only have to worry about an AWP at the moment. So it should be pretty pretty simple and straightforward for them to take this round. I mean, what kind of options do you like in a situation like this? Yeah, they know that they have one AWP. I would just go for a slight push together as we're spread out, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. The Guardian will take down one. He's going to spot a second one, gets the headshot onto Zipnix, spots the third player, even connects with it. And they are going to be completely distracted by Guardian. This creates a huge opening for Na'Vi in the chaos to actually take it all down to Carrigan. And he's got to get the bomb planted as well, but it's such an exposed position. It's going to be quite difficult. Now, if Edward and Flamey play this smart, they might be able to pull this one off. Carrigan now will spot the headshot onto Edward. There's the second player on short. He knows where Flamey is. And he doesn't have any armor, no weapon to, to use there, and he's going to go down. And TSM saved the round. It's so smart for Guardian to put himself uh, towards Monster there, because in the meta right now, if, you, if you're if you up versus like one AWP, and you know the rest is going to go for an eco, you usually just go for a like four or five man push at the like least expected place that you're going to put the AWP. And it's like, he's probably not going to play Monster, yeah. because you can't really r like run around run around there. It's usually and, like, A, isn't it? And Guardian just figuring that out, and just, okay, I'm just going to go Monster. So this is a fast double peek here down from Na'Vi on their buy round. And wow, they're, they're three players dead in 20 seconds, less than 20 seconds after the start of the round. So, okay, now it's just a vice left. So this is going pretty well for Na'Vi, and they should be able to claim um, an AWP soon enough as well. So device, objective, get some damage done. There's a little bit of damage onto Edward. And uh, Na'Vi, they shouldn't be too worried. They know what the bomb is there as well. Device is picking up another kill, and he didn't take any damage that time either. So they've got to be very careful here because they're facing him one versus one, and they don't have to do that. Yeah, and already two kills. This is actually a very big deal for Navi because that they can't build up a bank now, and if they lose the next round, they will actually be forced to Nico just due to these two kills of Device. So, uh, and a third kill from Device as well, just playing amazingly. And he, he will actually be able to pick up the bomb. 
Yeah, he knows exactly where it is, of course. Uh, sees it uh, on his radar. And Na'Vi, the remaining two players, Flamey and Zeus, are sticking together. But this is a disastrous round at the moment. It's turned, in f it's turned into uh, from a completely one round to a round where they, sh they, well, they, sh they should still win it. There's a small uh, chance that Device can actually pick this one up, but they've also got to make sure that they don't inc incur more damage. And he actually is going to be able to plant the bomb. This could actually be like the sickest clutch in like this year. So Device is uh, now going for the plant. And there's a player on series. He's been completely silent. Now Device has to be fast, but it will be Zeus with the frag. So they can breathe a sigh of a relief there. Because, yeah, as you said, that would have been... The thing is, is that... That's one of those situations where, like, we're, well, five versus one. Yeah, exactly. We're fine. We're super confident. And then w one versus two post-plant. Yeah, and, like, like especially you, you and still, he got three kills. He got the bomb down. And now he has a really bad economy, like, even before that. So, yeah, that was, like, like, that, those three kills on that plant could basically be a free round for TSM. Yeah, I mean, there's no AWP for them now, and uh, for Na'Vi, and there's a lack of grenades, and they're in a position where they have to eco if they lose lose this one now. So it's it, yeah, such a big deal there from Device to come out huge like that. And uh, the score at the moment, 4-4, four, four, we're tied up at the moment into the ninth round as TSM are going to be taking over Sewer's control. Zeus is in a very committed position towards Monster. If they do push that, of course, he's got nowhere to fall back to. But he's got help, he's got uh, Flamey to kind of bait bait him out there so to distract them essentially. Zeus is going to peek out. He does get taken down by the monster exit into the B bomb site. Now as uh, KGB is going to try to smoke off the kind of jungle area and make sure that his team can get that bomb planted. So post plant positions looking pretty good at the moment for TSM as they are going into this three on three. But that nade was perfect somehow finding Zipnix. But now Carrigan is going to be expecting some CT players very soon. Be jumping over. It's Cajun B though, gets double peaked. Good stuff here so far from Navi, but it is going to be down to the one on one. Edward with the superior health though, going to win that duel and get the defuse. But again, so much damage by TSM. Yeah, and that round TSM should have won though. They did a great tactic where uh, they know that Navi just playing two guys defensive on B. So they just push really close in the monster, really close in the sewers, and they push at the same time. And they did a one for one trade with both Zeus and uh, I think it was Flamey, yeah. And after that, you just you have the bomb site, and you have a lot of time to just push towards the spawn. And uh, they just managed to fail in that after plan somehow. And uh, well, we're going to see some good boosts coming in from Navi, just mixing things up a little bit this time. TSM with a bit of a force buy, to be honest. They got three Galils, a Tech Nine, just a few grenades. So let's see what they're able to do here. They know that the economy for Navi is so so weak that they just want to keep the pressure on and. Uh, Another few frags would certainly be good, but they could pretty well win this one, force the eco out. But they're going to go for the push towards toilets. Going to have the trace coming in as TSM quickly gaining ground now. Seed able to take down Carrigan, switches up the weapon. He's got T's all around him, but he's got support as well. Guardian coming in, going to be able to cover his back. And once again, it's Device against almost the entire Na'Vi team. He's one versus three. Bomb is down in the control of Na'Vi. Seize is right next to it. Device is going to be patient. He's got 50 seconds to play with, so patience is definitely... A virtue in this situation. Well, he will get spotted now. And there's one in the smoke. Seize picks him up. And that is another round for Na'Vi. And this time it was, it was only two guys dying. So not too bad. Yeah, but uh, I think two, two guys is still enough to keep their economy so low that they, I think they might be forced to Nico. Three. It's kind of 50 50. Yeah, TSM actually going for the full econ now. This is actually a good decision. They. They, they, like, they gave up the fight here, okay, we can't break Navi's economy, let's just go for a full eco and just try to play our regular game with names. Mm. Take care of our economy instead. Oh wow, what a grenade that is! Beautiful that they've done the research for that one, and that did quite a lot of damage to Zipnix. And Flaming now is left alone by the barrels on the bomb site. He's going to have to do a good job holding this down, but he did throw the smoke and it's kind of like a putting a brick wall down, it would seem, on the monster tunnel. And uh, you can see... <laughs> minus 24 seconds there. Um, if they are going to go the longest route towards the A-bomb site, running all the way, but they are going to go uh, through a shorter route, but they are going to run into Edward. And an inter interesting thing is that TSM hasn't utilized long a single round. That's a really good point, actually. We haven't really seen much in the way of warping. I mean, economy for both teams has been a little bit sketchy, 
But uh, looks like this cleanup is going to go fairly well once again. Uh, two guys dying, so as, as you said, actually, I mean, it's kind of okay for Na'Vi, but it's also okay for TSM. So keeping them within that, uh, that range of being uh, forced to an eco. I wonder if TSM is going to go for that uh, like fast B push, where they, they don't like use nades, they just try to get uh, Na'Vi's face and just try to gain as much ground as they can. And we see three people long and one guy pushing short for uh, Na'Vi right now. They're just taking a huge risk, just stacking A. Okay, yeah, this is going to have to pay off here for Na'Vi. They are mixing it up massively, so not only playing alone on the B-bomb site, now the challenges are coming in. It's going to be uh, TSM that actually win the ground towards party, but again, there's two players still on A long at the moment. They can push through, and Na'Vi haven't really shown much aggression towards this area, so it could actually catch TSM off guard slightly. We're seeing Device is moving with the bomb in the party area. Very slow round so far after those initial picks. Yeah, one for one trade. Uh, favorable for TSM. Just uh, slowly clearing, clearing positions, and that is essentially what you have to do is the, the T side, take it slower on this map. The T CTs can be anywhere on the A side of the map, and Edward is actually going to finally peek around the A long area towards T spawn, and he's going to spot them rotating back a little bit, so Guardian is going to go and help Flamey out on the B bomb site. So I like this from Na'Vi. They've got Zeus working on connector control for a fast rotate to B if they play for that. And they're going back actually and Zeus will get the frag onto Cajun B. So mid control here for Na'Vi. Fast rotates either way. And they're going to try to kind of like fake out a little bit onto Flamey. And uh, they are pulling more players towards B. A is actually completely empty at the moment. Yeah, and Device just so risky walking up with the bomb towards the park there. And uh, it might actually work, uh, work now because there doesn't seem to be any Na'Vi players there. but. I can't believe he, he went back to the park alone with the bomb when they have just spotted Edward being there. You can even saw Kaden trying to point that out. And the rest will actually lose that goal as well. So, I mean, that, that's one of those rounds where basically every... Like, TSM had, a, had a, an interesting call there um, to kind of make that situation after the one-for-one one a little bit better for themselves. But everyone lost their jewels on TSM. So you never really got to see what it could have developed into. But... Uh, what, did you think the theory there was pretty good from them? Yeah, you mean the round from Navi? Uh, from from TSM, how they were handling their T side there. Yeah, they looked a bit scattered, especially like yeah, the bomb going alone back to park. Yeah. I, I much prefer to just go like if you do, do a one for one trade on this map, you should just go together like push E, B, or push A. Just keep it simple, not try to like spread out as they did there. Yeah, lots of lost one v ones from TSM. Na'Vi 8-4 to four now. They're actually really, they had a very shaky start, but they've managed to bring themselves back into a nice situation. And Zeus, that pop flash is perfect, actually. He's going to adjust to actually take down the guy that wasn't flashed, and it's going to be a 1 for 2 there for Na'Vi, and it's going to be a committed play now into B for TSM. Flamey able to spray down Carrigan. They cannot deal with Flamey just sitting on the barrels with the support of his teammates throwing in those grenades and his device still locked into the monster tunnel. That's going to be where his final resting place will be thanks to Flamey and 9-4 to now the score. So Na'Vi settling well into the CT half. Yeah, and it looked like TSM was going to have a great half there in the beginning. I think they were up 4-3. to three. But after Na'Vi gained control over their, their economy, they just they just got in, yeah, exactly six rounds in a row and this looked just looking so easy for them. Okay, so TSM now, what are they going to be able to do? Can they get uh, some kind of party and toilets control? That's been a big point of contention between the two teams and generally on overpass, as it is always. And Guardian is going to spot one player, and in fact, uh, it's going to be his teammate Edward who was actually putting support in with the rifle to take the frag. And they're going to spot all these players pushing up. Now Seize is caught between two, able to uh, get that frag though, TSM, and push forwards onto the bomb site. Guardian now eliminated as well. Usually he's the, he's the big stopping point for Na'Vi, but he gonna fall and that's gonna put it to a two on two allowing TSM to potentially get this bomb down but that fire is making things a little bit tricky as Na'Vi have bought enough time to get themselves onto the site and they stopped the plant so TSM they're all down to Cajun B against Flamey now as Flamey just sits behind just waiting waiting for Cajun B to make a move for that bomb and there it is Flamey picks up the kill with the headshot onto Cajun B so Na'Vi 10 to 4 now and TSM without that bomb plant not necessarily with the buy that they, that they would have wanted. Yeah, TSM actually playing that round really well. Like, you having it come down to a 1v1 as TN overpass is actually a good thing, but uh, they just couldn't get it that time. 
So it's looking quite scary here. Na'Vi have done such a good job so far on the CT side to stabilize and then get the momentum uh, just strung together and just keep it, keep on keeping on. And uh, Guardian's going to actually have to fall back here, but it's going to be Edward in this one. It's a new position. The jumping spray finds the head of Edward from Dupree. And Guardian's up close. This is really dangerous. Guardian's going to have to come out huge, but he gets taken out immediately. They're going to be charging onto the bomb site now with the men advantage seized by the Q position here. It's going to be sprayed down. And TSM are looking fantastic here. They just have to keep the push going. But Na'Vi have arrived. The Flamey and Zeus are both on the bomb site, but they're not in the best positions. They're kind of stacked up on the big truck there. But TSM, they still need to get that bomb towards the site. Now, they've got options here, and they've got time. A minute left in the, in the rounds. And, and he's going back. going back. He's going back alone with the bomb once again. But now he's going back towards A, so... They're kind of faking themselves out a little bit here, making things a little bit too complicated because now it's an even situation. Zeus peeks out at the pivotal moment where he can actually capitalize on a frag, a one on one, and it's going to be TSM now trying to get that bomb down, just faking it initially. It's down to Flamey. This is it. coming into play there by Bank. And uh, good stuff here from TSM with the position. And Flamey is really unwinnable at that point, and it's going to be uh, a fifth round for TSM, but. Again, it, it seemed like they were making things maybe a little bit more complicated than it should be. Yeah, just look at the last round. They just went for a straight up YOLO, like short towards A, and uh, it completely worked out. The good thing about pushing there, I said earlier, like, if you want to just play stand alike and just go for kills, you just try to push the tallest because the dual stairs are so safe. Like, even if you get up to the A site, you can just rotate back down the stairs and go towards B. So it's like you're not committing yourself to the actual bomb site. You're just gaining so much ground and like forcing such uh, awkward rotations there from Navi. Well, I mean, if Navi are able to actually get this pistol round as well, I mean, TSM going to be in a really, really hard position, only having five rounds on the B side. Of course, uh, Navi were able to win their pistol. It was a bit tumultuous, but tumultuous even. But uh, here we go, Tech Nines pushing in from Na'Vi. TSM has spotted the push. They've left one man on the C bomb site. The rest have their attention set on the A site here. And it's going to be Device picking up a long range frag on Guardian. Zeus is going back towards the monster area. And that's going to ring some alarm bells here towards B. Now, TSM are not entirely sure where Na'Vi are now, especially that they spotted Zeus towards monster. Yeah, and. Uh Still two tech armor here for Navi. It's always really scared to play versus tech armor when you only have a USP. Making their way through connector now completely silently. And TSM still with a lot of bodies towards the A bomb site. So this is definitely the right call from Navi. Just gotta find those headshots, but Karen will take down one. Looking for the flick shots, it's going so well here. For TSM, they're going to lock down that B-bomb site, carrying with two excellent kills, and it, it, he made them really quickly. And that's that's the key moment. They couldn't even get through the choke points. Yeah, I, I was just going to say that I thought Carrigan's position was quite terrible. Like, <laughs> he, he, the, yeah. like where he's supposed to go, he's just going to get like a sandwich from the short at the same around, time. Yeah, yeah exactly. And uh, But yeah, he just completely out aimed to another players, and uh, the second pistol around as well going in favor of TSM. Yeah, and uh, oh, it actually was Navi who won the first one. So it's going to be interesting now to see if uh, Navi is getting damaged on with the dudes. Because in in I mean TSM, they were so good at keeping the pressure on on Navi. And I wonder if Navi are going to be able to do the same kind of thing. TSM have a, a more defensive approach than than Navi did in their position. So that might be what they need to do. But they're going to be swarming them over here. And Carrigan's in that position again, and he's showing why he thought it was terrible. Completely exposed. Gets completely wrapped in the bomb site is now in the possession of Na'Vi. Bomb planted as TSM are storming it back. They've got a three on three now. Got a little bit of uh, positioning to work with the jungle, but they're getting just tapped down from all over the place. Device has no idea which way to look. This is go for the straight up challenge, just strafing in with the pistol, the P250, and, and that's that's Na'Vi winning the round. That's huge. I, I really don't understand Kerrigan's position. They're like. On the B side on overpass, you either want to go to like, okay, we're gonna defend the shokes, you know, monster and short, like let's hold the shokes, or we're gonna go for the, okay, we're, we're gonna let them go out the shokes, take the site, and we're just gonna play back in graffiti, back in up the balcony, or even in the sea to water. But uh, like this pillar, just looked like nowhere you can go, and he, as you saw there, just got sandwiched from those tech nines. And he didn't have cover from, there's like no plenty of bar barrels of monster or anything to like, 
Yeah, if they push it at the same time, you just... Yeah, so it's pretty strange, but... Well, Na'Vi, they do have a P90, few Famuses. They picked up a lot of money, actually, from TSM that, that you know, the TSM had invested in. So that's going to really jumpstart Na'Vi's economy. Great mate there onto, onto the pre. So it's just a pretty easy cleanup so far from Na'Vi. They've put it down to three players here from TSM. So next will somehow get a long-range frag with the P2000, but I don't think Na'Vi are really very low at this point. So that this is, this should be Na'Vi 12 to 6. Um, as far as... As far as edges to gain over Na'Vi go, is there anything that you think TSM should be doing? Like I, wh think should should <coughs> I think they should eco so they can have like smokes, molos, and an AWP. Like, it's so important, especially on the B side. Uh, if you can just delay them with a molo on the B bomb site when the pushes come in, you usually buy enough time for the rotate to come. So I don't want to see them going for like, you know, pharmacists, just one flash, like light armor, they should just eco until they have that uh, full nade set and pro hopefully an op as well. Alright, let's see how it goes. We do have the full eco here for TSM. Now, they've got two players in connector at the moment, so that actually can get pretty scary, especially when the P90 runs in, just spraying health a lever, but it's going to be Na'Vi slowly working their way up towards A at the moment, which is, I mean, they don't know it, but it's the perfect call have uh, Guardians, uh, Seas rather, just lurking around the back here. And now TSM kind of f figure it, figured it out. They've pushed the monster area. Carrigan's going to keep on pushing whilst his teammates rotate back around to A. But it looks like Na'Vi going to beat them to the punch here. They're already on the bomb site. They already know it's clear, which means only one thing. TSM stacks B, and they're probably playing for the Exus at this point. So let's see if uh, they can actually get the Exus kills here. Na'Vi looking quite good. Drive by there from device with the pistol. Going to claim one, but that's it so far. And that's going to be it for this round. 13 to 6. Na'Vi looking like they want to close this one out really fast. Yeah, and uh, I like the decision that TSM went for that double eco, though. They know if they want to come back into this game, they have to go for that complete lockdown. And you can only do that by having those nades, having that off. And you can see Kerrigan with the off there. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw full nades out there on the rest of the players. Yeah, it's definitely a, a bit of a, been a bit of a struggle here. Double off, actually. Yeah. Now, this is something that uh, can go really, really well, or obviously quite horribly, especially if you've got Guardian there winning the challenge. So that's one all down. And Na'Vi, with that early pick, they can really play around with TSM and just try to make things worse. And we can already see that an information play is kind of being forced out from TSM. They've, they're actually pushing Dupree on A long, as we can see now. And he's kind of key. This one on one, there it is. He is going to win it against Edward. Good stuff there from Dupree. And. Uh, that's going to even things up a little bit. And the rotation time is so fast for TSM that this becomes a much better situation. It's a bit like Nuke in that sense. Yeah, you're <coughs> running through that Cetus spawn uh, like bank area. It's just so fast. So Na'Vi, they've got Flamey now moving up through Monster. And TSM don't really have anyone very close to that position. So the device is practically playing from water here. That ramp is going to have to do the job with Zipnix for the site defense. But it's such a, s a weird series of angles here for TSM. The device will pick up one kill, but the bomb goes down in the meantime. And it's just fighting there. <laughs> there we go. So he's able to finish him off. So super weird positioning there from uh, TSM. Completely giving up monster. Dupree gets eliminated as well. What do you make of that? I actually think the, the round was like lost when Kerrigan made that peek through monster. It was like, <coughs> if you were up or you're down 13 to 6. Yeah. You can't take like huge risk. You just have to find a way of play that's so solid that you can string like six rounds together, like straight. And peeking out monster with off, like if guarding is waiting there, carrying in is going down because the terrorist right. is there like way earlier. Like always, you can always the CTs get the favorable engagement if you got the right weapon. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, so this round here for Navi could mean map points. Again. We are going to see Edward the pass here. It is the push from Cajun B though, spraying him down, but Guardian's going to cover him. And TSM putting a l two players for this connector control. But Na'Vi, I don't think they're all that worried about this. They've got, they do have quite a few players surrounding them, and I think they know that at least one player's there. That's a great grenade. Zeus will finish to pre-off before it detonates. And uh, they found the vice now as well. They're going to attack him from two sides at once. No way he can withstand that. And it's just Carrigan left over. And they invested everything in this round. And Na'Vi looked to be going very quickly to map point and it looks like uh, the choice of overpass was a really smart one. 
Yeah, things just looking very easy for Navarro right now, just picking TSM apart and <coughs> we usually see TSM doing that round where they just walk down two people down the stairs. They usually use that round when they're under a lot of stress and they have to just try something crazy. And yeah, Navi just played it absolutely perfectly, they just played it safe, they just pushed from the stairs, pushed from down the ladder, like two people from each side, just slowly like just picking them off and uh, yeah, Navi just playing very well right now. The TSM actually seem a little bit lost um, on the CT side. Um, of course, they haven't had many opportunities on CT to actually get the rounds because Navi, you know, they were 10-5 up, but still, um, as you said, taking those risks um, in in the in these key moments and uh, generally speaking uh, across this this map, I've seen TSM trying to play a lot of one on ones and it just generally been going on this way to be honest. Yeah, I agree. And just back to that risk play from Kerrigan. It's yeah, so hard so you can gain something. Like either they rush monster or just push a lot of AKs, and then you're probably just gonna get one, and you're gonna fall back in a position where you would rather have a rifle, or someone is gonna hold you with an AWP, and then you're gonna die. Yeah. So it's like. I don't know in which situations that would be good. It's if one Navi player would hold there with an AK, which is very unlikely. Alright, so it's going to be uh, once again a very similar opening to both sides. The pressure from Navi is obviously the A toilets area, and it's going to be Flaming who picks up a really long range frag there onto the device. Cajun B does get a trade, but it's going much better for Navi. The weapon advantage, Guardian picking up that frag with the AWP, is certainly going to make things really troublesome now for the remainder of TSM. So, the thing is, is that there's so much time left here, but <laughs> Flaming's just going to charge up by himself, and both players have been pulled towards A for TSM. And again, Navi got so much time to play with. They don't have to rush themselves. Yeah, just going two people long. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the third one <coughs> who's playing balloons right now. It's just gonna go slowly towards short. He just wants to watch the flank from the stairs first. Sipnik's all alone here. Spotted one there. Yeah, there is the incendiary turn as well. He's gonna ro uh, rotate to the flank very quickly, which is smart because if Karagan pushes in, then he's gonna, they can attack from two different angles at once. This is a smoke off. He's gonna take the opportunity to push straight through, but Guardian finds the shot onto him. And it's just down to Carrigan now, in game leader here for TSM, to try to keep them in it on map one in this series. And he is gonna get dropped by Seized. 16 to 6. Big, big map number one here from Na'Vi. They are not messing around in TSM. That was, that was rough. Yeah, and like the two key rounds on the last half was TSM won the pistol. Then they lost that Tech 9 round where Kerrigan took that really weird position on B behind the pillar where he just should have like either you push all the way up or you just fall back. You don't do something like in between. And of course the round where they had that double eco, they went for the double op and then the Kerrigan just picked. <laughs> it's, it feels like I'm flaming Kerrigan here but like it was those mm. two like key rounds that lost them that half I think. Yeah, so we are going to have to see if uh, they can recover on their pick Cobblestone, which is, again, an interesting one. It, it does feel like both teams are kind of trying to like counter-pick each other, which is not the usual thing. And you can see that the Vice looks absolutely beside himself there. Wow. I mean, just, just yeah. take that in for a moment. Like, it's definitely looking like he's really stressed out, and it's not... Th like, they just, it's, it's actually getting into their heads a little bit. So, uh, well... Guys, we all will take a short little break here and we'll come back with uh, the analysis of map number one between these two teams. So stay with us. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> 